Okay, so the idea is we build a whole bunch of different patterns in the UltraBeat sequencer, and then we know that UltraBeat synchronizes to logic. So what we want is for UltraBeat to play the correct patterns at the correct bar positions along the length of our arrangement as it synchronizes to logic. And to do that, we need to reference these MIDI notes in brackets next to each pattern number in the pan list. Every single UltraBeat pattern has its own MIDI note. Now at the moment I've only got the one pattern that I just created, um, this one, in pattern slot number one. And we need a few different patterns to switch between to show this technique. So with pattern number one, there's the current pattern, I right click on the pattern slot, copy pattern one, load pattern slot two, right click and paste pattern one into pattern slot two. Load pattern slot three, right click, paste pattern one into pattern slot three as well. And now pattern one, two and three are the same. Now I'll choose pattern two, I'm going to modify it to make it different. I'll put a little clap riff in the middle. Then I'll choose pattern 3 and I'll change that to make it different. I'll put a snare roll right across it. So now I've got three different patterns. Pattern number 1, the basic beat. Pattern number 2, the clap riff. And pattern number 3, the snare roll. Right, now what we do is this. On the UltraBeat track, I'll pencil in four empty regions like that. I'll just do this over four bars just to show how it works. Open them in the editor. Okay, so down here in the editor, I've got my four MIDI regions. Region 1, Region 2, Region 3 and Region 4. And I'm going to put a note in each region. So in the first region here, I'll pencil in the note on C-1. Boom, there it is. Now it doesn't matter how long the note is or the velocity of the note, but the note must be on the very first beat or step of the bar. In the second region here, I'll put the note on C sharp minus one. In the third region here, I'll put the note back on C minus one again, the same as in the first region. And in the fourth region here, I'll put the note on D minus one. Okay. Now what we do is this. If we look at the bottom of uh, UltraBeat, it says pattern mode off and we can switch pattern mode on. Once pattern mode is on, the sequence of playhead of UltraBeat turns blue and UltraBeat is now in pattern mode, sitting in standby, waiting and listening for incoming MIDI notes. And if it hears a MIDI note associated with any pattern, it will play that pattern. Okay, now next to the pattern mode switch, there's a drop down list here, and here we can choose the type of response that UltraBeat will have to incoming MIDI notes when it's in pattern mode. And at the moment it's in the default toggle mode. Okay, so, to show you the principle of this, I don't even need to have um, logic running. As long as the green MIDI out lamp is lit on your piano edit, if you click on any note with the pointer tool, it will send that note into UltraBeat, triggering the pattern. So the first note here in the first region is on C minus one. That triggers the first pattern. Its MIDI note is C minus one. So this is the first pattern, the basic beat. Click on the note once to play and click on the note again to stop. The second note here in the second region is on C sharp minus one. That triggers the second pattern because it's note is C-sharp minus one. Then in the third region here, the note is back on C minus one again, triggering the first pattern, the basic beat. Then finally in the fourth region here, the note is on D minus one, and that triggers the third pattern, the snare roll, because it's MIDI note is D minus one. Like that. So basically you put it into this pattern mode and then UltraBeat sits there listening, waiting for incoming MIDI notes and if you hit play anywhere where there is not a region on the UltraBeat track, UltraBeat does nothing. right? But as soon as the playhead crosses a region with a note in it, UltraBeat will play the pattern associated with the MIDI note. 
So these four regions have got the four notes in to play pattern one, pattern two, pattern one again, and then pattern three. Here we go. Yeah, and that's the principle of the technique of MIDI notes triggering patterns. And this is an old technique, it goes all the way back to the early days when people played gigs with hardware. At your gig you'd have your drum machine synchronised to a little hardware sequencer, you'd have a few keyboards, and then at the beginning of the gig you hit play. And your drum machine plays the pattern that is the first pattern in your set. And then anywhere in the set you can press MIDI keys on your master keyboard which will send notes into the drum machine changing the pattern. So you can change the drum machine pattern on the fly by just pressing MIDI keys anywhere in the set. And that's where the technique comes from. But it's been brought into the modern era because pretty much every software drum box on the market implements this old school protocol. Okay. Um, now you might not know this but you don't actually need a, a region on every single bar you only need to have a region with a trigger note in it at the bar positions where you want ultra beat to change pattern. Okay, now remember these two regions have got the same note in, both triggering the first pattern, so they're the same. So I'll knock one of them out. Now we've got three regions with three notes in for the three different patterns. Pattern one, the basic beat, pattern two, the clap beat, pattern three, the snare roll. And I only need to position these at the bar positions where I want the pattern to change. But of course there must be one at the beginning to tell Ultrabeat to begin playing at the start of the song and also to tell Ultrabeat which pattern to begin playing with. And the way it works is, um, you know, once this first region here has triggered Ultrabeat to play the first pattern, that pattern just keeps on playing over and over in sync until the next region arrives, triggering a different pattern and then the new pattern plays over and over in sync until the next region triggers a different pattern and then that new pattern plays over and over in sync until the next region etc. That's how it works. So these three regions will trigger the three different patterns and each one will play for four bars, four bars, four bars like that. Here we go. Let's just make them all visible in Piano Edit down here. Right, here we go. Change. Change. Like that. Now that technique works great, but of course, a little bit further down the line, you will want to work on the fine tuning of your arrangement, and then you will quite often want to hit play at bar positions where there is no trigger region for Ultra B, and of course Ultra B does nothing. So you think to yourself, well I need to fill these gaps in between the regions that are changing the pattern, and you think, well that's a bit of a no-brainer isn't it, I mean I'll just copy this region over and over to fill in the gaps until the next region here that changes the pattern, and then I'll copy this region over and over and fill in the gaps until the next region comes with the changing to the new pattern and then I'll copy that one over and over until the next region that changes the pattern etc. Well yes, um, but the thing is what you end up with is a long line of MIDI regions right across the length of your ultra beat track. They all look identical and you've got no way of knowing which is the actual regions that change the pattern. Unless you put markers along the top of your song or something like that. So the best way to work, let me undo all that, is position your trigger regions at the correct bar positions where you want the patterns to change, highlight the whole lot and loop them. Boom! And that fills in the gaps between the trigger regions with the loop copies. Well, let's see how that works with Ultra Beat in toggle mode. Here we go. What? No. Uh oh, you see it doesn't work. Every the, the first loop copy and then every other loop copy, the notes inside Ultra Beat just blanks those notes. 
Okay, so what you want to do, Shan, is just switch Ultra Beat into one shot trigger mode. Boom, like that. And then this looping technique works perfectly. Yeah, every single loop copy triggers the patterns correctly and you can hit play anywhere. And the patterns play correctly like that. And the beauty of this is that you use the loop technique to quickly fill in the gaps but you can still see where the regions are that change the pattern. Here is an original pattern changing region followed by copies. Here is an original region followed by copies. Here is an original region followed by copies. Okay. And that is how you do that. Um, now then, a few things just to finish up. We started off in toggle mode. Um, but there's also this toggle on step one and sustain. So let's just look at these. Toggle mode. With toggle mode, the length and the velocity of the note don't matter, but the position of the note is critical. In toggle mode, the pattern will begin playing wherever the note is. So if you want your pattern to play from the very first beat or the very first step of the bar, then the note must be on the first step, and then the pattern plays from the first step all the way through. But... If the note is on the second beat of the bar, like that, then the pattern will trigger on the second beat of the bar. But not only that, the pattern will begin playing from the second beat of the pattern. And if the note is on the third beat of the bar, the pattern triggers on the third beat, and the pattern itself plays from the third beat of the pattern. OK, so that's your um, toggle mode. Okay, then you've got this toggle on step one mode, and this is the mode to choose if you're playing live and you want to switch ultra beat patterns on the fly from MIDI keys on your master keyboard, as I described earlier, you know, where the technique comes from. With toggle on step one, the position of the note is irrelevant. Okay, the note can be anywhere in the bar doesn't even have to be on a 16th division line it can be anywhere like that and what happens is the note gets triggered ultra beat hears the note but it waits until the very first step of the next bar to play the pattern like this switch ultra beat on though here we go You see, so you'd have it in toggle on step one, and then <clears throat> anywhere in the bar before the bar where you want the pattern to change, you can just press the key on your keyboard to change the pattern. You don't have to worry about the timing of the note. You can press the note anywhere in the bar. Ultra beat hears the note and then changes on the very first step of the next bar. So you press the notes to change the pattern in the bar before where the one where you want the pattern to change. Okay, that is toggle on step one mode. And then finally we've got this sustain mode. With sustain mode, the note length det determines the pattern length. Okay, so if you want your pattern to play from the very first beat all the way through the length of the bar, you want your note on the first beat, and it must last for a whole bar in length. And then in sustain mode, the, the pattern will play all the way through a full bar length. But if the note is only one beat long, the pattern only plays for one beat. If the note is two beats long, the pattern plays for two beats. If it's three beats long, the pattern plays for three beats, etc. And then stops. OK, now you can get into the sustain mode if you want some of the patterns in your arrangement to last for one, two or three beats only, and then stop and leave a gap. Okay, in which case use sustain mode. But if you do use sustain mode, the looping technique works 100%. Right? So that's how you do that. Um, 
triggering patterns from MIDI notes. And some people really like this technique because you always work with the ultra beat sequencer. If a pattern needs to be edited, you edit it in ultra beat. You never have to get into faffing around, penciling notes and moving notes for the different drums in piano edit or something, right? The patterns always play from ultra beat sequencer and you edit all the patterns in ultra beat. And some people like to work that way. But the downside of the technique is that there is quite a lot of mental calculation. You've got to make sure that the right note is in the right regions at the right positions along the entire length of your song to play the correct patterns at the different points. And that takes quite a bit of mental working out. And if you don't want to go to all that uh, mental head scratching stuff but you do want to build all your patterns in ultra beat and then when you finish building the patterns you want the patterns to play across the length of your arrangement well there's another technique we can use and that is pattern export because ultra beat does pattern export so let's look at that next <laughs> 